Hello everyone and welcome to homework number three. Um, we are going to introduce viruses in this homework, so um, make sure you have a piece of paper to write your Cornell notes on, um, and you're going to want to make sure that you write not only what you see, but also what you hear, because today there are going to be a lot of things that I say that are very important that I don't necessarily write. So let's get started. So you want to start by writing your essential question today. Um, your essential question is, why are viruses not living organisms. So that might kind of catch you off guard, um, but we need to understand that viruses are not alive, and so the main goal of today is to understand why are they not a living thing. So viruses are not living things because they do not meet all of the characteristics of life. So if you think back to like August, September, when we started um, biology and we talked about the characteristics of living things, we said all things in biology that we're going to study for the most part are alive. And so we need to know the characteristics of that. Well, viruses do not fall into that category. Viruses are not living things. And three of the reasons that scientists say that uh, viruses are not alive um, are here, okay? So one, viruses do not have organelles. Okay, they do not have organelles. And this is the more important part, um, to take in or use nutrients. So um, if we think about prokaryotic cells, they don't have organelles, they don't have um, a nucleus inside, but they take in and they use nutrients. They're living organisms. Viruses don't have organelles because they can't take in those things. They can't use those nutrients on their own. Secondly, viruses cannot make proteins. So we know from our central dogma unit um, that we take DNA, we make mRNA um, from that, and we um, build proteins from that. So living things are able to build those proteins, but these viruses are unable to do that. They can't build proteins, which... Um, we know now, um, do a lot in our bodies. And the last one is probably one of the most important things. Um, viruses cannot replicate on their own. So all living things are able to replicate or reproduce. Um, viruses cannot do that. Um, and we're going to take a look at that. Okay, so what is a virus then, right? Like, if it is not a living thing, it can't reproduce, it doesn't have organelles, what in the world is this? So here are some pictures of various viruses, um, and you're going to see all sorts of things um, on tests, on quizzes, on, on textbooks, in the news, and things like that. Viruses are everywhere, um, and they look various um, ways. And so um, a couple of the main ones you're going to see is this guy right here. He's called the bacteriophage. Um, so he's a virus that affects bacteria. And then another one that we're very familiar with is influenza. Um, so this circular shape is what influenza, so that's the flu that people get every year. Um, that is what influenza looks like. And then down here, uh, if you've heard anything on the news in the past couple of months, um, or the past year, I guess, um, this is the Ebola viron, um, which is a virus as well. So as you can tell, viruses look very, very different. Um, one thing you're going to notice that all of them have, okay, is genetic material, right? So they have genetic material. Some um, viruses are going to have DNA, some are going to have RNA, um, and so it just depends on the type of virus, and we'll get into that later this week. Um, but they have genetic material, okay? You can see it right in here. You see it in here. Um, you see it in here in the Ebola virus and in here. Another thing you're going to notice that all um, viruses have are these spikes on the outside, okay? They have some sort of way to attach to our cells. So you see them all here. Okay, or even these little legs. Um, and so we'll get into more of the structure um, of viruses because there's a few other things you need to know. But um, here you can see most of the similarities that all viruses, even though they look very different, are going to have. All right, so here's an example of the time that you're going to have to write when I don't... Um, when I don't write it on the screen, you're just going to have to listen to what I say. Um, so how do viruses harm us if they aren't alive? So how are viruses even um, able to hurt us if they're not living things, right? So here are the two ways that viruses um, use us to reproduce. So viruses are parasites. They um, invade us, and then they hijack our cells and use our cells and all of our cells' machinery um, to do their jobs. So um, you can see there are two cycles. Oops, sorry. <laughs> there are two cycles of reproduction, um, the lytic cycle and then the lysogenic, I will write this for you, rather than the other word, um, 
lysogenic, okay? Um, so these two cycles are fairly similar except um, for one aspect, okay? The lysogenic cycle happens over a long period of time. Um, it, the virus goes in and it hides in the cell. So you can see here in this picture, over time, okay, as we go down the lys uh, lysogenic cycle, um, these viruses replicate, um, they hijack the cell, and they just slowly go through. So this is the virus DNA, the little red part right here. And it slowly um, goes into different cells throughout this organism's body and just um, s slides on into its DNA um, and hijacks that cell. And then eventually, you see this arrow here, it joins into the lytic cycle. And so when something goes into the lytic cycle, when a virus enters this, um, it goes into the cell and immediately begins to replicate itself using the cell's machinery. So the virus will go in and it'll use our nucleus, it'll use our ribosomes, it'll use our proteins, and it does all of that so that it can replicate itself. Um, and so the virus doesn't have any of that machinery to do replication on its own, so it goes in and hijacks ours. That's why we can say that a virus is a parasite. Okay, so that was a very brief overview about why viruses are not alive. Um, and so one thing that I want you to do for your debrief is I want you to compare a virus to a cell. And I want you to answer the question, why is a cell a living organism while a virus is not? So um, write your answer in four sentences and be ready to defend your answer um, in class if you talk about this the next day with your teacher. Um, and so watch this video again, review what you thought and um, what you learned, maybe even look back at your notes about characteristics of life or look at your textbook about that um, and try to compare why a cell is alive and a virus is not. All right, see you next time.